Very warm welcome once again, and we turn now to our orders of service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, forgive you your sins <clears throat> and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit, and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we sit now for our first reading. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows, was caught up in paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. 
On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast. Except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool. For I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it. So that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me. Even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, Grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. 
Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is his wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. On Tuesday of this last week, the church marked the feast of two great apostles, Peter and Paul. On this day, the church celebrates the example of two holy men whose faith and witness, loyalty and passion are the foundations of our church. Peter is by far my most favourite figure in the Bible, and I would like to argue that this great apostle is just like you and just like me. What I mean by that is Peter gets things wrong. In fact, Peter gets things majorly wrong. Has there ever been a better example of someone who falls away from God through misunderstanding only to be welcomed back with open arms? Throughout his time with Jesus, scripture tells us of many times where Peter is the one who speaks first and thinks later. He is the one who strives to be close to Jesus, who pledges his steadfast faithfulness, only to fall into denial when Jesus needed him the most. St. Paul's story is similar. Not one of the twelve, Paul's journey with Christ began with him persecuting the church. His blindness to Christ is remarkably and profoundly transformed in his encounter with Christ on the Damascus Road. And from then on, the church has its apostles to the Gentiles. In today's Gospel reading from Mark, we have illustrated for us two different types of people. Those who reject Jesus and his messianic ministry, and those who accept him and follow him in faith and in trust those who get it wrong and those who get it right. Firstly, we see Jesus rejected by his own people who recognize the power of his words and his actions, but cannot believe that the young Nazarene carpenter whom they had seen grow up could possibly be speaking with such profound and prophetic words. Their familiarity with the young Jesus had made them blind. The child Jesus whom they had known and loved had grown in both human stature and worldly knowledge, but also into the vocation and ministry of salvation that had begun in his incarnation. 
Here we see a maturity in Jesus in both his human and his divine natures. The sending out of the twelve is also recorded in both the Gospels of Luke and Matthew, and I think that reflecting on this event in the early life of the church at Pentatide is a good time to consider how we as active Christians today live out our Christian calling in our everyday lives and relationships. Jesus charges his disciples to go out, clothed with the power to cast out demons and heal the sick. This commandment, to go, is reminiscent of that call to all Christians to go and make disciples of all nations. And as Paul writes to the Philippians, we can do all things through Christ, who gives us strength. But I wonder if we truly believe that we have the power, through the work of the Holy Spirit, to release people from the bondage of this sinful world by being Christ to them. Whilst many of us would not claim to be miracle workers or healers, we can show through our actions and faith by encouraging others to believe in him that Jesus is the true healer of all. Jesus could not minister to his king in Nazareth because they had no faith in him. Therefore, how can we expect Jesus to be the healer of our world if all that we do does not point to the way to abundant freedom and eternal life that is in Christ Jesus himself? It is important that we recall how those people who accepted Jesus stand for us as examples of faithful discipleship. Those who put their faith in Jesus Christ are released from the captivity by the mighty arm of God. Both Peter and Paul were released from both spiritual and physical imprisonment so that they could see, believe and preach God manifest in the person of Jesus Christ. And this is the calling placed on those twelve who were sent out to obey to trust, to preach and to witness to Christ with no weight of possessions, only resolute faith. Calling from imprisonment to freedom is something that we as members of Christ's body, the church, should be familiar with. We are called to freedom from what makes us captive in the world. We are called from the bondage of sin into a daily relationship with our ever loving and ever faithful God the God who loosens the chains and bids us come. He calls us out of darkness into light, the light of Christ. Peter time is the time when much talk of calling comes about. It is the time when new priests and deacons are ordained, where new journeys of faith and ministry begin. And this is truly a joyous time for our church. In our own church family, people are preparing to begin a new chapter in their journey with Christ as they are confirmed. The apostles Peter and Paul do not only shine for us as beacons of strong Christian faith and witness, but of God's instrumental work in their lives. And so if Peter and Paul stands as paragons of faithfulness for us to emulate, then today's Psalm, Psalm 48, gives us the other key ingredient to ensuring faithfulness to the Christian call, to trust. Here the psalmist introduce, instructs us to trust in the Lord, the Lord of loving kindness, who promises to be our guide even unto death. It must have taken great trust for St. Peter to drop his fishing nets on the shore, leaving all he knew to follow Jesus. We too require trust in the Lord, that he will sustain us as we are formed into the people God truly wishes us to be. We are invited to drop the nets of the things that separate us from God and walk in the footsteps of the apostles. A mixed bag of men and women, sinners and fishermen, with a tax collector and a thief within their ranks. These holy people made mistakes and got things wrong. Yet God loved them and Jesus loved them. God saw their faults, their imprisonment to sin, and forgave and changed them, drawing them into his freedom and service as witnesses to his Son. And as Christians, we know that peace and blessing find their source 
in a deep and loving relationship with Jesus Christ. And we access this through prayer. As the book of Acts tells us, it was the church active in prayer that was the catalyst for God's hand to be on Peter in the dark cell of his imprisonment. The more we allow Jesus to be the centre of our lives, as Peter and Paul did, then the more we know peace in our hearts. The more we witness to and proclaim Jesus to be the saviour of our world, the more we know peace in our communities. The more we model Christ, the more we become free to walk in his light. As the hymnist writes, Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine eye diffused a quickening ray, I woke, the dungeon flamed with light, my chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. And speed the day we can sing those words once again in church. Jesus is calling all of us. For those who follow Jesus truly and faithfully, the first thing to remember is that we are each called to tell others about Jesus. For new and old Christians alike share the same primary calling. The primary job of any Christian is to go out and tell others about Jesus, even in the face of adversity. And when the responses we get are ones of derision and mockery, or when we are persecuted and criticised for what we believe, or for what we do, we should respond in a Christ-like way, allowing every fibre of our beings to the point to the glory of God. So this week, following in the footsteps of the blessed saints Peter and Paul, let us pray for ourselves, for each other and for the whole Christian church across the world, for the times when we have allowed ourselves to deny Christ, for when we have failed in our calling to tell people about Jesus, for when we have invited people to seek and receive him through word and sacrament, as we do again in this Eucharist, Yet what we have shown them is a betrayal of our human fallenness and fault, rather than the great mercy and abundant love and peace which come from knowing the Almighty God. The Almighty God who frees us from the bondage of sin through his cross. Only when we centre our hearts, our minds and our lives on Jesus Christ will we see the prize of heaven open to us, toward which we can walk boldly unfettered and into freedom. Amen. Amen. So now we stand to affirm our faith in the words of our creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Now we sit or kneel to pray. here today, and so as we gather together at home and in church, we offer to you our prayers, which stem from our love for you and our love and concern for those we love and for the people of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, when the church joins together, we can show people a much fuller picture of Jesus and his kingdom. We pray for your church worldwide and the churches in our local community and ask that there will be a growing desire to get together and get out. We give you thanks for those who come up with fresh ways of making your name known to the wider community and for those who work so hard to make worship possible through online services. Lord, in your mercy, pray to God we pray, not only for the victims, but for the perpetrators of evil and violence in our world, for all governments which run on corruption and fear, we pray for a change of heart and attitude, on awakening for a better way of living and the courage to reject wrong principles. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Father God, forgive us when we waste our lives by being too busy to enjoy your creation. Teach us how to make spaces in the day to do the things we most enjoy. Just as you rested from your work and encourage the Israelites to rest. Help us to practice the discipline of recreation. And help us to become your hands and feet in our street. So that our neighbours will one day ask us to tell them more about you. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. loving God, help those we know and love to turn away from the habits which are harmful to them. Help them to turn to you in times of crisis rather than reaching for a quick fix solutions. Lord, we also bring to you those we know were ill or suffering in any way, give them healing and restore them in body, mind and spirit. And in a moment of silence, we especially pray for those in our hearts at this time and those on our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Mighty God, we remember all those who have died, and particularly those we have known and loved. Thank you for them, and thank you for your promise of eternal life and peace. Be close to those who have recently bereaved. Strengthen them with the knowledge that you are always there to lean on, and to be carried through difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, faithful God, 
the start of this new week. Help us to show integrity in all that we do in our lives, to value all people equally, equally as did the owner of the vineyard. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And now a special prayer for those we love and who love us. I said a prayer for you today, and no God must have heard. I felt the answer in my heart, although he spoke no word. I didn't ask for wealth or fame. I knew you wouldn't mind. I asked him to send treasures of a far more lasting kind. I asked that he be near you, at the start of each new day to grant you health and blessing and friends to share the way. I ask for happiness for you in all things great and small, but it was for his loving care I pray for most of all. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and singing.
praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
So as we prepare now to share in communion here at St. Mary's, we invite those who have joined us on social media to become a part of this moment in our prayer of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. A most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now, before our final blessing and dismissal, just first of all one notice on the notice sheet, and if you look at the bottom underneath the readings, there are two um, uh, vacancies coming up in the diocese. Uh, one for uh, an admi inter internship administrator and the other one for a property administrator. So if you or anybody you know might be interested in those, there are links on there to find out more. And now it gives me very great pleasure to publish The Bands of Marriage. So I publish The Bands of Marriage between Gavin Rhodes of the Parish of Christ the King and Charlotte Victoria Mackenzie Teal, also of the Parish of Christ the King, and this is for the third and final time of asking, and between Alexander James Whittaker of this parish and Chloe Louise Coulter, also of this parish, and this again is for the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why these people should not be married, you are to declare it now. And so we hold these couples in our prayers as they prepare for that day. So, Lord of love, we pray for these couples. Be with them in their preparations and on their wedding day. Give them your love in their hearts throughout their married life together. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So now, would you please stand for our blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank mm -hmm. you.